everyone, I hope that I find you very well indeed and a warm welcome back to What's For Tea. Or if you're new, a warm welcome to you also. My name's Cheryl, this is What's For Tea and I'm going to be taking you through an incredibly easy jam roly-poly. I made this for pudding tonight and it was absolutely delicious. I asked you guys on the community page what you'd rather see next and a lot of you wanted to see the jam roly-poly. So I think it got 30 or 31%. I'll pop it up in a wee second just to let you see but I think it was round about that. This is a ridiculously easy to make like I said and uses only five ingredients. Everyone in this country <laughs> has probably tried roly-poly at least once in their life. You know, it's a great British tradition, full of retro charm and jam. Perfect as a midweek treat or, you know, after dinner or any of the time, you know, as a cheeky snack whenever you fancy a wee pudding. So, yeah, like I said, only five ingredients. And as usual, I've got the ingredients listed down below. So this is what I'm going to be using today if you wish to follow along with this ridiculously easy recipe. So the first thing I've got there is 100 grams, which is about 3.5 ounces of beef suet. You can use vegetable suet if you prefer. I'm just using the beef one because it's so easy to get a hold of here. I've also got 300 grams, which is about 10.5 ounces of raspberry jam. You can use strawberry if you prefer. I prefer raspberry jam, so that's why I'm using it. I've got 175 grams, which is about 6.2 ounces of self-raising flour. I've got 50 grams of caster sugar, which is about 2 tablespoons. And the last thing I've got there is 150 millilitres of milk, which is about 10.5 fluid ounces. Like I said, guys, super easy. You know, it's oh, ridiculously easy, but it's delicious. Like I said, an old school classic that you're going to love if you give it a go. You know, if you like puddings and stodgy puddings, especially, you will absolutely love this. Yep. So let's move on and we'll see what's next. First thing you want to do is grab yourself a mixing bowl and to that you want to pop in your flour and your sugar. Followed by your suet and then your milk. And that's it. <laughs> All you're going to do now is mix all this around with a knife. You just cut into your mixture and keep mixing until you get this lovely stiff sticky dough. And then you can go ahead and flour your work surface. Again, this is just, you know, the self-raising flour. Pop your dough on top. Just give it a wee pat down. You're looking to get this into a rectangle shape. And you want it about 8 inches by 11 inches. Super easy. Just make sure your rolling pin is well floured and your work surface. And you shouldn't have a problem with sticking. Or at least I didn't anyway. <laughs> you know, this is the first time I've actually made this from scratch. I mean, I've had it tons of times, but this is the first time I've actually had a go at making it myself and I found it a doodle. So that's me just about there. Eight inches across and 11 inches long ways. Once you're happy with your shape, you can go ahead and pop on your jam. Just make sure you leave a wee edge around the sides so that it doesn't all come scooshing out, you know, when you roll it up. Although mine's done that anyway, but we won't talk about that. <clears throat> so roll it up quite tightly to begin with, just to get it started. And then you can go a bit looser with it the further up you go. And if you get any excess jam, like I did, just wipe it off. And just make sure you've rolled it on top of your seam and your seam is underneath. You're going to cook it seam side down so the whole thing doesn't spring open. This was ideal. 
I was super chuffed with this. Now what you're going to do is you're going to grab yourself a sheet of aluminium foil and on top of that you're going to pop on a sheet of baking paper around about the same size and you're just going to grease the baking paper with some butter. This was the trickiest part of the recipe, <laughs> trying to get this paper to stay still. So now you want to get your log on top of your baking paper, just like that. And now you want to pull your paper up around about your log, creating a kind of loose parcel. Because bearing in mind, this is going to expand in the oven as it steams. So you want to just leave some room in there so that it's got some breathing space. Just twist around your ends. And that'll be fine. Lovely. Like I said, you are going to be steaming this like a pudding. So you want to get yourself an oven dish, just like this one. You want it either the same size or bigger than your pudding. Half fill that with boiling water from your kettle. And on top of that, you just want to pop a wire tray. And then pop your pudding on top of that. You just want to put the whole thing into the middle of your oven for between 35 and 40, sometimes even 45 minutes on gas mark 5 or 200 C or 375 Fahrenheit. And this is what you'll have hopefully at the end. And this smelled ugh, unbelievably good. It smelled just like walking into a bakery, so it did. Like I said, the first time I've made this, but I have, you know, obviously had it loads of times before and this is exactly what I was hoping for. Perfectly cooked, lovely and moist, ever so stodgy. <laughs> it's quite a claggy dessert and it is quite heavy, so you won't want too much of this. It's lovely served with some custard or cream, or, you know, we tend to have ice cream if it's a warm dessert. So that's what we had with this. We just did a wee ball of ice cream on the side. But if you're choosing to have it cold, you know, it would be lovely with some nice warm custard as well. So yeah, that was it. Like I said, really easy. I know some people struggle, you know, with sticking and things. But like I said, first time I've made this, you know, and if I can do it, anybody can do it. It really was really easy. And it well worth trying, you know, if you do like your sort of stodgy puddings. Or, I know it's more of a winter pudding, but, you know, the people that like desserts will say, oh, there, there's never a wrong time for a pudding. So it's really down to yourself whether you want to give it a go or not. But I just thought I'd pop it up and give it a wee go since so many of you wanted to see it. So that was it. So let me know down below if you're going to give it a wee go yourself or indeed what you thought of it. So that's me. I'm away now to go and edit <laughs> my second video of the day. So I'm going to go and go on with that and I'll get that popped up hopefully tonight if I can. I'm doing it, you know, as we speak or as you're watching this, I'll be away editing my wee video. So I will try and get that up tonight if I can. So until I see you guys or whenever it is you choose to come and join me again, all the love in the world and uh, mind to take care of yourselves from our kitchen in Scotland to wherever in the world you are. Bye for now. Bye now. <laughs>